Sassaker's daunting text of magical frivolity and practical japery. The colonel amuses men marginally less south than he on a sweltering Mississippi evening. In true Sassaker form, he puts his astonishing his astonishing julep intake to use with the textbook execution of Butterfinger's Solitaire. Dear John, you are no doubt reading this as a handsome and strapping young man. Why, the man grit needed to lift the book is itself a sign of your maturity, not even to speak of the wisdom needed to grasp the nuance of Sassacher's time-tested mischief. I am so proud of you, grandson. How I wish I could have delivered this heirloom to you in the flesh. But I'm afraid it wasn't in the cards. For you see, John, like you, this book must yet take a journey. Its journey will end on the final day of my life, and even then will continue some. Though I suppose that will be up to your father. Perhaps he will discuss it with you one day, when you are ready. But it is your journey I am writing about to wish you luck. There will come a day when you will be thrust into another world. And once you arrive, that is only the beginning." You will soon delve deeper into a realm of warring royalty in a timeless expanse, a realm of agents and exiles and consorts and colonel sprites, of toiling underlings and slumbering denizens, a realm where four will gather, the heir of breath, the seer of light, the knight of time, and witch of space, and together they will ascend. John, if only you knew how important you were. I regret my passing came so early in your life, and yet I feel in my heart we have already met, but what I know for sure is that we will meet again. Until then, John, I do hope your father keeps you well fed. With love, Nana. P.S. Hoo hoo hoo! Act 3 A silly girl naps by her flowers. It is quite likely that she tired herself out with a variety of silly antics, as silly girls are often known to do. She may have a silly name, too, or maybe not. It is hard to say for sure without asking her. But since she's slumbering peacefully, it would be a shame to wake her up. You might as well just give her a name right now. Enter name. Farmstink Buttless. Uh, I guess her name is Farmstink. Wake up! You try to rouse Farmstink from her slumber, but she is really down for the count. It looks like she is holding some sort of note. Retrieve arms from... They're right there! In plain sight! Look, they are flashing red! Drop pumpkin on farm stink. What pumpkin? You see no pumpkin, and frankly it is hard to imagine there ever was a pumpkin, in plain sight or otherwise. Anyway, that would be a really terrible thing to do to poor sweet farm stink. Read note. Farm stink? That is incredibly silly and a little bit rude. My name is... Try again. Jade Harley. Examine room. Your name is Jade. You have just woken up from a restful nap, and as usual, you have no recollection of having fallen asleep. You have quite a number of interests. So many, in fact, you have trouble keeping track of them all even with an assortment of colorful reminders on your fingers to help you sort out everything in your mind. Nevertheless, when you spend time in your garden atrium, the only thing on your mind is your deep passion for horticulture. What will you do? Jade, play a silly flute refrain. Wow, you really suck at this thing. Maybe you should try playing an instrument you actually know how to play instead, like the one in your bedroom. Honestly, you have no idea where this flute even came from. Things seem to appear and disappear around here all the time, especially, to your unending chagrin, any sort of large orange gourd that might be lying around. You consider throwing the flute down in disgust. Capulog Flute On second thought, it was a perfectly nice flute, and there is no reason to take your frustration out on it. You just need some time to practice. But before you capulog the flute, you'll need to set your fetch modus first. Set modus. You have a wide variety of fetch modi to choose from. You were really excited when your grandpa bought you this modus set for Christmas. He's a total badass, even if a little strict. You typically opt for the memory modus when it comes to matters of day to day practicality. Select memory. 
You set your modus to memory and capture log the flute. You allot nine cards to the modus from your deck, since that will be more than enough for your needs at the moment. The modus grabs nine more cards for matching purposes. The flute is split up on two blank cards and mixed randomly into the grid. To retrieve the item, you must first pick one card and then pick its matching card. For the typical Silodexter, this modus presents a frustrating guessing game and a lot of wa- and a lot of wasted time on mismatching. But you like it because you seem to have a knack for always guessing right on the first try. Squeal like a piglet and fertilize some plants. It is an awfully silly idea and is basically a waste of everyone's time. You'll predictably disregard this thought and focus on more sensible ad- objectives at once. Oh my god, this is so much fun. You capture log the bag of fertilizer. Consult colorful reminders. You tend to have a lot of things on your mind at once, and you can be a little forgetful, so you keep a variety of colored strings on your fingers as reminders. Each one means there is something different to remember at a certain time. In fact, looking at your index finger reminds you that there is something important to remember now. It is your friend John's birthday. The green string reminds you that John's birthday package will arrive today. The blue string also reminds you that John's birthday package will arrive today, though in a way that means something slightly different. You are further reminded that you have some things to do outside your house soon, but you should stop by your room first for some supplies, and most importantly, to see if John is online and wish him a happy birthday. Caps log the pumpkin growing next to you. You snap up that pumpkin, which seems suitably ripe for the taking. Hopefully, the safety of your silodex will prevent it from being spirited away like so many of its ephemeral predecessors. Exit this room. You make your way to the middle of the garden atrium, where the stairwell joins the four atrium wings. Upstairs is your grandfather's laboratory, as well as your bedroom. Capture log something. Your memory modus is hardly any fun without much stuff in it, so you decide to stock up on fresh produce to fill some more cards. You pick a juicy red crab apple. You go pick a nice-looking key lime. Then a delicious mandarin orange. Those are your favorite. And finally, a ripe yellow Eureka lemon. Modus fun aside, you feel it is impossible to have too many fresh fruits and vegetables on hand. Go upstairs to bedroom. You almost never use the stairs. You transportalize upstairs. Just above is your room. Ascend. You enter your bedroom. On this side of the room, you are immediately confronted with numerous artifacts highlighting your various interests. You are an avid follower of cartoon shows of considerable nostalgic appeal. You have a profound zeal for marvelous and fantastical fauna of anthropomorphological persuasion. You have an uncanny knack for nuclear physics and not infrequently can be found dabbling in rather advanced gadgetry. You enjoy sporadic fits of narcolepsy. Your love of gardening transcends the glass confines of your atrium, and you are at times prone to patterns of precognitive prognostication. You consider very briefly the question, What will you do? But you quickly realize this is only one half of your room, and is therefore host to only half of your interests to choose from. Explore the other half of your room. Over here are yet more articles of your aforementioned interests, and then some. Additional telltale signs of your enthusiasm for nostalgic television mingle with your assortment of game-hunting firearms. You are a skilled markswoman, though though your crosshairs would never settle on an innocent creature, anthropomorphically persuaded or otherwise. Your work table is littered with equipment to facilitate your tinkering, For you, experimentation is not a particularly exact science, and you lean heavily on sharp intuition for consistently and eerily optimal results. Nevertheless, you still have not been able to get that broad, flat gizmo there to work, which is a design you have borrowed from one of your grandpa's more mysterious inventions. You are a great admirer of his, and you are not alone. Your grandfather is a world-renowned explorer, naturalist, treasure hunter, archaeologist, scientist, adventurer, big game hunter, billionaire extraordinaire. He has taught you everything you know. But in spite of all his lessons, it is still difficult to escape his stern lectures when you are on your way out of the house to run your errands. He spends most of his time in the grand foyer 
stewing in his own intensity and charisma. And today will likely be no exception. Among the errands you have planned is to venture out to find your pet and best friend named Beckerl. This animal must be fed and he will not be happy if he is not. And if he is not happy, then you will not be happy. But first, you really should dig out your computer and say hi to John. Now, what will you do? Quickly retrieve firearms from wall. You equip your trusty hunting rifle. There would be hell to pay if your granddad caught you leaving the house without it. Wonder why the design on your shirt changed. There isn't much to wonder, really. You left the wardrobe fire on its randomization setting. You may contemplate which shirt design you favor the most and commit to that setting in the near future. Capture log near Squiddle's doll and hug it. Just before you can grab one, the powerful electromagnets concealed in their underbellies become activated, and two of them get all tangled up with each other playfully. You capture log the Tangle Buddies. Lose interest in fauna and never speak of it again. Oh, but you could never do that. What marvelous creatures they are. What a darling dream to combine the finest qualities of humanity with the elegance and nobility of the animal kingdom. How you wish you could know their world. To hear one night those muted pop heads traips up your stairs, a low but friendly growl unsettles your slumber, and as the sopor seeps from your eyes, they detect a sharp pair of ears cutting moonlight. A mysterious woven tongue invites. Wouldn't these ears suit you? Would not this proud long snout assist you in the hunt? No need to answer. Words slough from the busy mind like a useless dead membrane as a more visceral sapience takes over. Something simpler is in charge now, a force untouched by the concerns and burdens of the upright, that farcial yoke of the bipedal toe. It now drives you through the midnight brush, your paws whisking through creepers, unearthing with each bold stomp bright odors demanding investigation, but not for long, as you and your new friend must claim the night with piercing howls moonward. You eat a weird bug and don't even care. Pick up your toys. Speaking of which, you pick up and admire one of your manthro chaps. They are wonderful friends and are always cheerful and pleasant fellows. Why, dear Mr. Coxcomb, how ever will you be received at the barnyard gala without the trappings of a proper gentleman? Each manthro chap comes with a number of accessories, including articles of formal attire, a vaccination kit, and a dishwasher safe slop trough. Organize all your dolls. You gather all your dolls into a rather cozy looking pile. Change wardrobe fire setting. You deactivate the wardrobe fire's randomization mode and set it to cycle through these three shirt designs. The decision was tough, but you think you came to the best possible conclusion. Look out window. It is another beautiful day in your neighborhood. It is peaceful and quiet as usual. A rather imposing volcano looms over your house, which has been inactive for centuries. Though dormant on the surface, the volcanic activity deep underground provides your house with a source of geothermal power. You are not sure why your grandfather decided to draw from this source of energy when he had the unlimited power of the atom at his disposal, but it has been this way for as long as you can remember. You have chalked it up to your family's long-standing propensity for eclectic fursuits. Wait, you mean pursuits. Retrieve fursuit from magic chest. What is this nonsense about fursuits? You do not own a fursuit. You think anthropomorphic fauna are really cute and enchanting and all, but it has never occurred to you to dress as one. Sure, it is fun to imagine what it would be like to run wild with a pack of wolves or purr and frolic with a litter of kittens, but dressing up as an animal just seems ridiculous. It would still just be a silly girl draped in a raggedy, synthetic, tufty piece of crap. And seriously, who are you trying to kid with that sort of baloney? Anyway, it is not a magic chest. It is your gadget chest, which you have adapted for storing a number of useful gizmos. It was once your oracle's trunk, a gift from your grandfather, of course, and still contains many silly fortune-telling knickknacks, all of which are completely bogus. Open Chest among the fortune-telling knickknacks, there are these items. A crystal ball, plus compulsory velvet pillow, a tarot deck, a magic eight ball, a magic cue ball, and one of your favorite books of all time, Problem Sooth. 
Among the useful gizmos are, of course, your computer, which you keep inside a fun lunchbox for easy transport, and a couple of gizmos you keep handy so you don't always have to make the long trip to the kitchen. There is a cocalizer for preparing delicious meals, and a refrigerator, a name which clearly is a wacky variation on the much more common household item, refrigerificator. Examine Magic 8-Ball and Magic Cue ball These are stupid and useless. When the Magic 8-Ball isn't being frustratingly ambiguous, its forecast is always wrong. You have tested it numerous times with certain facts you know to be true. This is its reply when you ask if, you, if it's your friend's John's birthday today. Not exactly. See? Stupid. You guess maybe it could be used as a reverse prediction device and always trust the opposite of what it says, but that seems dumb to you. And anyway, the thing gives you a bad vibe. You might consider smashing it, but you are a little superstitious about whatever ominous consequences that might have, even if the occult talisman in question is a cheap piece of garbage. The magic cue ball, on the other hand, is said to make predictions with alarming precision and specificity. Unfortunately, it lacks a portal on the surface that allows you to view the prediction. You put both of these pieces of junk back in the box. Capture Log Refrigerator You take the refrigerator. You might as well grab the cookalizer, too. No portable kitchen is complete without it. You take your lunch top, too, because obviously you're going to be using that pretty soon. Whoops, there goes your flute, but who cares? Feed your friend. Before you go out to feed Beck, you will need to prepare a meal for him. You clear some space on your work table so you can set up your refrigerator and cookalizer. Just for fun, Jade allows you to take a stab at matching the cards to use the gizmos. It doesn't present much of a challenge for her, so she figures she might as well step aside while providing a few generous hints. No, no, warmer, warmer. Cooler. Cooler. Cold. Warmer. Yes. No. Cold. Ice cold. Warmer. Warmer. You have selected the key lime. Way to go. Try again. Hot. Wait. No. Cold. Really cold. Frozen fucking tundra. Take another crack at this. Congratulations, you advanced your matching skill to a new level. Yukon Hero, Legacy of the Frostbite Amputee. Jade is beginning to regret breaking the fourth wall for, for this ill-advised escapade. Okay, one more time. If it were known in advance how terrible you were going to be at this matching game, the author may have given second thought to preparing this cool interactive flash application. Look at all these fruits on the loose. Good luck trying to settle them down. You just deploy the gadgets yourself. Stick fruits in their refrigerator to keep them fresh. These fruits are unlikely to become less impudent anytime soon, regardless of where they are stored, but you stick them in anyway. You take a look at the refrigerator's rotary interface. You wonder what he is in the mood for today. Press the steak button. Okay, well, it's a rotary dial, so there are no buttons to press, but whatever, that doesn't really matter. You dial up a thick T-bone steak, which you are sure Becquerel is in the mood for because he is in the mood for steak every day and is never in the mood for anything else. But he does like his steak well cooked. Lightly irradiate steak. He does prefer his steak rare after all, but you will not dignify the thought of turning the knob much further because you are not ridiculous. You capture log the irradiated steak and save it for your trip outside. You probably shouldn't waste much more time. You wouldn't want all those nice depleted steak isotopes to settle down. Examine the atomic base by your bed. You wouldn't exactly call it an atomic base, but it is heavily customized to accommodate a high level of musical virtuosity, the perfect instrument for the eclectically spirited. You've tuned the strings way down, of course, because your stumpy arms can't reach the low notes. You switch your eclectic bass to its advanced setting, but you promptly switch it back, since obviously it's too complicated to play it in person like this. The default setting is your preferred mode for casual jamming. And since you can't possibly waste enough time playing music, casually jam is exactly what you're going to do. Play a hauntingly relaxing bass line. Capture log bass. You take the portable amp from the wall socket, too. 
open lunch top. You like to make yourself comfy in your plushy pile before getting down to business with your computer. Get down to business. Activate Pester Chum. Hey, look, John is online. Hooray! Also, it looks like Dave pestered you about something yesterday, but you missed it. Pester John. You greet John, but he does not respond. He is undoubtedly gallivanting around his house in a state of barely restrained birthday mirth. He may also be retrieving the two packages and the two envelopes, which you are certain came in the mail for him earlier. You will wait a little while and see if he returns before you head out. See if Dave left you a sweet new wrap. It does not appear so, but you just never know with that crazy and cool guy. So cool. Turned at Godhead, TG, began pestering Garden Gnostic, GG, 4-12-23-14. Hey, oh, you're asleep again, aren't you? Or do you even know if you are? I still don't know how that works. It's like, nothing means anything. It's so cool getting hella chumped by your coquettish damn riddles all the time. I don't know why I believe anything you say. I'm like this grand marshal of gross chumpage, waving around my, my freaking chump doctor baton. Assistant Director of Chumpography. Celebrated author Ernest Chumpingway. Wait, weak. Chumple Stillskin. Uh, Chumple Dilpshit. You're asleep? Y in. ASL? S equals species. Baboon? Kangaroo rat? If kangaroo rat, yif twice, please. Okay, well, you're not saying anything, so I guess whether you're awake or unasleep or whatever, you're just not around and I'm wasting good material. Even worse, I'm wasting a killer fursona here. Like, I don't know, like a wide open V-shaped leotard and fuck ton of body paint? Some like sinewy back arching Cirque, Cirque du Soul looking motherfucker? Anyway, always low to the ground, getting a good prowl on. Like I dropped my keys in the dark. Nimblest son of a bitch who has the gumption to glue a nasty pair of latex cat lips to his face. For a reason that wasn't a joke. Jade, hey, where are you? Seriously, I'm sitting here tonight with a fucking bag of kibble jacked open on my lap, primed for goddamn bear, and you're gone. By the way, my name is Aquit Permusk. Hardest buttock in the jungle. Tempered steel. Hey, yeah, just wanted to give you this remix I finished. Here. Turn tech godhead sent garden gnostic file explore remix so yeah you don't have to respond to any of that by the way i'll probably forget half of the shit i said anyway talk to you tomorrow open fresh jams you open the fresh jams media player and add dave's remix to the playlist open in chidna and go to mspaintadventures.com gt boggle vacantly at the shenanigans it begins to dawn on you that everything you just did may have been a colossal waste of time. You open your web browser and visit MSPA. You navigate to a random page in the middle of the latest epic. Looks like he was just finishing up some sort of weird tangential intermission here. Whatever it was, it clearly advanced the plot in no relevant way possible. End intermission. Midnight Crew, Act 1031. You've killed a little time, but still no sign of John. Pester Dave. Garden Gnostic began pestering Turntech Godhead at 413-1236. GG. Hi, Dave. TG. Hey, sup. GG. Not much sup with you, bro. <laughs> TG. Haha. <laughs> Good one. It's all right. Being chill, I guess. You know how it goes. GG. Great. Feeling cool today, Mr. Cool Guy. TG. Oh, man, you know it. GG. So cool. TG. You know shit is ice cold up in here. Shit is wicked bananas, I am telling you. GG. So have you talked to John today? TG. Yeah, we were just talking a while ago about how he sucks at a Silodex. Can you believe he uses stack? That kid is ridiculous. GG. LOL. Well, that doesn't sound like much fun. TG. What was it you use again? Wait, never mind. I forgot when we talk about your goofy moduses, I get a migraine. What do you want with John? GG. I want to tell him happy birthday and ask him about his birthday package. TG. Oh, yeah. I was being sort of cagey and told him to check the mail because I was wondering if mine came yet. GG. I think it did. TG. Yeah? GG. And I think mine came too. 
TG. So, uh, I guess you want to know if he likes it or something? GG. No, he will not open it. He will lose it. TG. Oh, uh, wow. Sorry to hear that, I guess. GG. No, it's good, actually, because he will find it again later when he really needs it, which of course is why I sent it in the first place. TG. See, like, I never get how you know these things. GG. I don't know. I just know that I know. TG. Hmm. All right. GG. Anyway, I have to go. I have to feed Beck, which is always a bit of an undertaking. TG. Man, if I were you, I would just take that fucking devil beast out behind the woodshed and blow its head off. GG. <laughs> I don't think I could if I tried. TG. Yeah. Say hi to your granddad for me too, okay? GG. Yes, I guess an encounter with him is almost certain. It is usually intense. TG. Well, yeah, isn't it always with family? But he sounds like a total badass. GG. Yeah, he totally is. Anyway, gotta go. TG. See ya. Dave. Strife. Rose is online. Jade. Pesta Rose. TT. I require a font of frighteningly accurate, yet infuriatingly nonspecific information. Do you know where I can find a wellspring of this sort? GG. Ha ha ha. Yes, okay. But we can't talk for long. TT. Do you have plans? Gigi, well, yes I do, but it's just that you will lose your internet connection soon, and we won't talk again for a pretty long time. Not until you enter. TT, enter? Gigi, yeah. TT, this is what I was talking about. This is the itch that needed scratching. My avarice for the inscrutable. It is limitless. Gigi, lol, what did you want to know? TT, you've been insisting today was the big day. We would all play a game you didn't know the name of. A game you said I'd get in the mail and did. One that would help me answer some questions. But Strider is being obtuse. I can't catch John at his computer. You don't even have the game yourself. And on top of all that, my internet is unstable. So are you sure today is the day? Gigi. There sure are a lot of challenges, but yes, I am sure. Dave is cool. You know he will come around when the time is right. He just has a lot of work to do first. And so do you. You'll need to keep searching for a stable signal and, and power source. It'll be hard, but don't give up. And don't worry about me either. Focus on playing with John first. It all starts with you two. TT. Is there nothing else you can say to prepare me for this? I'm sure you think little of blithely upsetting dark forces with Grandpa Moreau over there on Hell Murder Island, but honestly, I've only read a few books on it. GG. Haha, <laughs> dark? That's ridiculous. I don't really know what to tell you other than it's not going to be what you think it is. And most importantly, you will have your questions answered, but they will be the ones you haven't thought to ask yet. Just be patient and be brave. You'll see. It will be fun. Uh-oh, looks like you've got to go. Take care, Rose. Tentacle therapist ceased pestering garden Gnostic. Jade, be the other girl. You are now the other girl several hours in the future. It appears a secret passage in the mausoleum has been opened. It's getting awfully toasty in here. You gather up your belongings, including your dead cat. Rose, descend. Jade, stopping the other girl and pester John again. You spent enough time for now concerning yourself with the future of your friends. John will not be available until later. By then he will have his hands full, as will you. You pack up your lunch top and get ready to take care of some business downstairs. Jade, descend. Try as you might, you can't stop your mind from drifting to the fate of your friends. You dwell on a particular configuration of reminders on your finger. Also in the future. But years, not hours. Under bare white branches, a sentry wakens. Game FAQs. Esper Beta. Some stuff about capture codes and punch card alchemy. Is anyone actually reading any of this? Or are they all dead? I don't know if anyone besides us is even alive playing the game, or if anybody even really cares what we have to say. Rose said I should add some stuff to this FAQ if anything occurred to me, so I guess I'm doing that. 
I figure at the very least it will be a good reference for just us to use, but Dave probably won't read any of this because he's sort of this whopping stupid horse butt. Whatever. I finally figured out those weird codes on the back of the catalog cards are for. Well, maybe not what they're always for, but a way that Esperb has exploited them for an in-game purpose. Every captured item stamps the card with a unique code, and a gizmo in Esper called the Punch Design X will punch a unique pattern of holes in a card which is derived from that code. The punched card can then be used with other gizmos to duplicate the item and or combine it with another item. I got to thinking about this, and with my amazing hacker skills, I noticed a trend. The whole pattern is based on fairly simple cipher, converting the capture codes to binary and then binary pattern is punched, where one is a punched hole and zero is unpunched slot. So um, here's the table just to be clear. And yeah, I won't read off the whole table for you, but it's letters and symbols converted to numbers. There are a couple oddball characters, exclamation and question mark at the end to bring it up to 63. 0 through 63 equals 64 total, i.e. 6 bits. Because the binary representation of the capture code characters are 6 bits each, which have a range of 0 to 63. So, for instance, the capture code for hammer is NZ7UN6BI. I looked at the index for N first, which is 49. The binary 49 is 110001. I keep doing that for all the chars and you get some codes okay that's the pattern that will be punched to the card but the bits are arranged top to bottom left to right in four columns like this or punched into a card like this wow okay that pretty much looks like shit but you get the idea so to combine the two items you just overlap two punched cards only the places where both cards have a hole will show through so it's sort of like bitwise and operation on both cards. The new pattern gives you the code for the new item. For instance, combining the codes for Hammer in Poco Ride gives a new code with less holes, obviously, which translates to a set of characters. That whole pattern went on to make the Poco Hammer, which is so red you have no idea. I've also wondered if you can combine items in other ways, like, like a bitwise or... That means combining the cards to get more holes, not less, i.e. the new pattern has a hole for every hole in either card. This pattern would be accomplished by double punching a card, like two codes, one card. I've got to try that sometime. But there are some mysterious things about all this. First of all, with the hole slots, there are 48 bits in total, which means there are almost 300 trillion possible codes, and 300 trillion sounds huge. When you consider it's supposed to account for all conceivable items, including all the wacky combinations of stuff, it suddenly doesn't seem that big. This leads me to believe that not every combination of item has a viable duplicate, but this is kind of obvious anyway, since there are more combinations of punch cards that will produce either a blank card with and, or a totally punched card with or. So there are lots of dud combinations out there, and many that will just lead to the same patterns. Like, for instance, a gun in an atom bomb could make some sort of ultimate death ray, but for the matter, a shoehorn in a pot of plant could lead to the exact same pattern. So weird. Also, it seems like combined items will always have patterns with either much fewer holes or much more holes than ordinary items, which will occupy the vast meaty middle of all possible patterns. It is strange and counterintuitive that more complex objects will have simpler patterns, but hey, there you have it. But all this sort of makes me guess the system can be cracked in some way. Like if you have a complicated item and you want to extract simpler components from it, there might be some algorithm for deriving the patterns you want, or at least narrowing down the possibilities. There might also be ways of charting through the simpler patterns on both ends of the bit spectrum and pinning down ones that will make cooler stuff. Who knows? I want to ask Jade about this because she's really good at this sort of thing somehow, even though she doesn't have my elite hexer cred. Too bad she makes herself so scarce all the time. Jade, if you ever read this, let me know what you think. And there's a link to a punch card calculator, which I think is pretty cool. That link is on page 845 of the new homestuff.com uh, website, if you want to know. You enter the laboratory. Rose, look for mad scientists. There are no scientists to be found, mad or otherwise. Or anyone, for that matter. The lab appears to be deserted. 
There is a kiosk, though. It looks like the kiosk monitors the lab's enormous hub grid. Jade, transport Elias as far down as you can go. This is as far down as you can go. The Grand Foyer is still a few floors down, but the transport lights are on the level is blocked by one of Grandpa's impressive big game trophies, and you just don't think he would cotton to someone moving it. Speaking of which, here are some of his trophies now. He has a million of these ghastly things. You really dislike them. Proceed. You hop down a level. Granddad also likes to accumulate valiant knights from his travels. These are pretty cool, you guess. Keep going. Oh yeah, how could you forget about his stash of decrepit mummies? God, you hate these things. Don't stop. This is your grandfather's collection of what he refers to as his beauties. No lovely lady will be fit for his collection unless her portrait has has spent at least 20 years bleaching in the front window of a beauty parlor, a sort of establishment he's plundered no less frequently than ancient tombs. You guessed they were sort of like your sisters while growing up, and you were always encouraged to look up to them. They are all awfully pretty ladies, you suppose, but it was always hard to get as excited about them as Grandpa. Jade, steady hard and keep your rifle at the ready. When adventure summons, I know you will rise to the task and take your rightful place among the daughters of Electica. That old coot sure is a bag of wind. Complete your descent. You reach the ground level. This is a stupid thing blocking the transportalizer. It is unspeakably hideous. Down the southeast hall is the Grand Foyer. You'll have to cross through it to leave the house. Looks like someone is pestering you. Even though you thought you had logged off? Answer. Carcinogenesis CG began trolling Gardenostic GG at 1304. CG. Hi again, idiot. GG. Oh no. CG. So I guess today is finally the day you fuck everything up. Is there nothing I can do to change your mind? GG. You can leave me alone. How can you even be talking to me after I blocked you? And after I logged out? CG, you don't get that I am better and smarter than you in every way forever. You don't get that because you are incredibly stupid. GG, I get that you're a jerk and you should shut up. Goodbye, you jerk. Garden Gnostic blocked Carcinogenesis at 1306. Hey everyone, this is Jax, aka Jackie, aka Socially Anxious Dragon. Um, and I'm trying something new where I just do all of my talking at the end so you don't have to start off listening to it. You can just get right in and then skip this at the end. Um, let me know what you think. I'm always trying to improve the way I do it and I have plenty of episodes to do so. Um, the reason I haven't been posting lately is I have been waiting on someone to do my, um, act to, uh, review with. And he has been unavailable, and so instead of just going ahead and posting another one, I was just waiting, 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 done waiting. I'm gonna try to stop doing that. I'll try to be posting one episode a week, no matter what. Um, I also am gonna try to do something special for 413. I don't know what that is going to be yet, um, but keep an eye out for it. Um, besides that, um... Yeah, just uh, hopefully I'll have my review episode out pretty quickly. I don't know if I'm going to just do that as a weekly thing or just go ahead and uh, post it whenever I get it done and then have another weekly um, episode just so I can get more caught up. But um, I hope you have been enjoying me reading it. I think I did it a bit uh, faster and more uh, kind of relaxed this time, but I can go back to a more um, recording sort of voice. I don't know. Just let me know what you think about the changes and stuff I've made. I have a Discord. Um, so just hit me up about that. I have a blog just for this, which is Jax Does Homestuck, all one word. Um, so you can hit me up there. Uh, I have links to my Patreon, my SoundCloud, which currently isn't getting updated. Let me know if you want me to update that with new episodes and just let old episodes um, fade out until I have the money to have the unlimited subscription. Um, And obviously, well, I mean, you know, my YouTube channel. So um, 
I also have a red bubble, uh, which is Jaxi Axe. And that has some uh, little Homestuck Jewel designs on it. Um, but uh, yeah, that's about it for today. Again, please let me know, like, get a hold of me if you have any suggestions or comments or or whatever. Um, I'm always looking to uh, include any feedback I get and try to make everything better. So yeah, just hit me up. Thank you again to Hussy and I guess now Viz for uh, Homestuck. And I will see you next week. <laughs>